Hi, I have 14 test questions on the psychiatric aspect of insomnia. Ready? Let's learn psych fast. Question one, which sleep pattern stage diminishes as an effect of aging? Is it A, stage one, B, stage two, C, stage three, or is it D, stage four? Answer D, stage four. So as we age, stage four sleep diminishes. Many people older than 75 years do not demonstrate any stage four sleep patterns. Between 2% and 5% of sleep is in stage one. Stage two comprises of about 50% of normal sleep time. And stage three, it's a transition between lighter sleep and deeper sleep. Question two, which of the following medications is commonly used in chronotherapy approach for treatment of insomnia? Is it A, Zaleplon, B, Melatonin, C, Quetanapine, or D, Medinophil? Now, the star of the show here is B, Melatonin. Picture it as the gentle conductor orchestra in your body's internal clock. In a chronotherapy, we're aligning your sleep schedule with this natural rhythm, and melatonin is like the maestro, making sure everyone plays in tune. Now let's take a peek at the other option. Zaleplon is more like a swift sleep inducer. It helps you nod off, but isn't the primary player in adjusting your internal clock. Quetanapine and Medinophil are like spectators in this scenario. They have roles elsewhere, but aren't the lead actors in a chronotherapy drama. So when we're talking about adjusting the timing of sleep to sync up with your body's internal rhythm, melatonin is the go-to choice. It's like the fine tuner for your sleep schedule to let your body dance its way on natural beat. Sweet dreams in harmony with your body's clock. That's the aim. Question three, what two phases make up normal sleep? Is it A, hypnagogic and hypnopompic, or B, REM and non-REM, C, alpha and beta, or D, delta and theta? The answer is B. In the realm of sleep physiology, the sleep cycle unfolds through a distinct phases, namely REM, rapid eye movement, and non-REM. Exploring the transitional states, we encounter hypnogogic during the shift from wakefulness to sleep and hypnopompic during the awakening phrase. Beta waves, reflective of our everyday wakeful state, give way to alpha waves as relaxation sets in while remaining awake. The initial sleep stages introduces theta waves, progressing into delta waves of stage three and four during a typical night's sleep. Delta waves are characterized by their sluggish pace and heightened amplitude mark the deepest phase of sleep. Question four, which neurotransmitter is primarily targeted by non-benzodiazepine hypnotics, such as zopilidine, for sleep inducing? Is it A, serotonin, B, GABA, C, dopamine, or D, norepinephrine? The answer is B. All right. So when we're talking about non-benzodiazepine hypnotics like Zolpidem, we're diving into the realm of sleep induction. The key player here is GABA, our neurotransmitter friend responsible for calming down the brain and making it more receptive to lullabies of the Sandman. Now, why is GABA the star of the show here? Well, these non-benzodiazepine hypnotics, also known as the Z drugs, specifically bind to the subset of GABA-A receptors. This binding enhances the inhibitory effect of GABA, which in turn puts the brakes on the neural activity, leading to the sedative and hypnotic effects we're aiming for during sleep initiation. Question five, you're assessing a patient who is being evaluated in an outpatient clinic for complaints of back pain. The patient reports taken diphenhydramine for insomnia related to job stress. Which response would be most accurate? Is it A, this medication should only be taken for one week? B, this medication can cause nausea? C, the medication should not be taken after eating a high-fat meal? Or is it D, this is a herbal medication that has been used for hundreds of years? 
Answer B. Individuals experience anxiety related to recent events of or anxiety induced by th- treatable medical conditions tend to show favorable responses to benzodiazepine therapy. For long-term anxiety management, alternative medications such as Zoloft, Paxil, Prozac, Effexor, and Welbutrin are considered more effective than benzodiazepines. It's crucial to note that benzodiazepines are not effective in alleviating severe depression or psychotic symptoms. In such cases, other treatment modalities are recommended for better outcomes. Question 6. Which disease is associated with insufficient sleep? Is it A, cancer, B, renal failure, C, myocardial infarction, or D, glaucoma? The answer is C, myocardial infarction. Why is that? Well, sleeping less than five hours a night is linked to a three-fold increased risk of heart attacks. However, conditions such as cancer, glaucoma, and renal failure are not found to be associated with insufficient sleep. It emphasizes the importance of adequate sleep for heart health, but clarifies that other health conditions mentioned are not directly related to sleep duration. Question 7. A patient with a history of sleepwalking is seeking pharmacological treatment for insomnia. Which medication should be avoided due to its association with an increased risk of parasomnias? Is it A. Sopilidim, B. Trazodone, C. Doxepine, or D. Diphenhedramine? The answer is A. So in this sleep-induced puzzle, the correct answer is A, Zopindem. It's like this. While Zopindem is often a go-to for inducing sleep, it has this quirky tendency to occasionally invite sleepwalkers to an unplanned midnight stroll. Picture it as a sleepwalking magnet of sorts. Now, let's take a peek at the other option. Trazodone, doxepine, or diphenhedramine are more likely reliable sleep buddies without the sleepwalking side gig. They may bring on drowsiness, but they usually don't lead to those mysterious nighttime escapades. So in dealing with a patient with a sleepwalking history, it's like crafting a personalized sleep portion. Zopindem might not be the ideal ingredient in this scenario. We'd want to avoid these unintentional sleepwalks and keep the nighttime adventures at bay. Sleep dreams without unexpected midnight wanderings. That's the goal. Question 8. Which drug would you choose that has better efficacy, acceptability, and tolerability for the treatment of insomnia? Is it A, esopiclon, B, melatonin, C, remelatin, or D, zopendim? The answer is A, esopiclon, also called lunesta. Esopiclone is employed in the treatment of insomnia as a hypnotic CNS depressant, aiding individuals in falling asleep promptly and maintaining sleep throughout the night. Notably, it has been demonstrated greater efficacy in long-term treatment compared to remelatin and zolpidem. Systematic reviews indicate that melatonin and other non-licensed drugs do not provide consistent overall benefits. While benzodiazepines are highly effective in the acute management of insomnia, their tolerability and safety profiles are less favorable, potentially leading to dependence, tolerance, and withdrawal effects. Question 9. An elderly patient has been taking Ambien as a sleep aid for the past two months. On admission to the assisted living facility, it is determined that the drug is no longer needed. What should you be concerned with? A, hallucinations are common. B, the drug needs to be withdrawn gradually. C, another anxiolytic will need to be substituted. Or D, sundown is a common withdrawal from this drug. The answer is B. It is important for you to understand that zopindim must be withdrawn gradually over a two-week period after prolonged use. If chloral hydrate is stopped suddenly, it will result in serious adverse effects. Hallucinations and sundanin are not common with the withdrawal of this drug. The prescriber and the patient would determine the need for chloric hydrate to substitute for another anxiolytic. Question 10. Hypnotic drugs are used to aid people in falling asleep. 
what physiological sleep does a hypnotic act on to be effective in helping a patient to sleep? A, the limbic system. C, sorry, B, the sympathetic nervous system. C, the retinacular activating system. Or D, the lymph system. The answer is the RAS. So hypnotics, they help people drift off to sleep by making them feel drowsy. These drugs work by messing the brain's ability to react to outside signals through the retinacular activating system. When someone is in a hypnotic state, they're just super sedated, basically tuning out from the world. Just so you know, the other choices aren't quite on the mark. Question 11. A patient presents in the ED with respiratory depression and excessive sedation. The family tells you that the patient has been taking medication throughout the evening and hands you an em almost empty bottle of benzos. What other adverse effects would you assess for this with this patient? A. Seizures. B. Tachycardia. C. Headaches. Or D. Coma. The answer is D. Coma. Benzos can have a nasty side effects like making you super drowsy, messing with the patient's breathing, or even putting them in coma. But hey, there is an antidote called what? Flumazenil that can swoop in and compete with the benzo for their receptors, thereby reversing the toxicity. Rarely enough, seizures, a racing heart, and a throbbing headache aren't usually the result of benzo toxicity. All right, next question. Question 12. What is the potential concern when using trazodone as a sleep aid in older adults? A, weight gain, B, extrapyramidal symptoms, C, hypertension, or D, orthostatic hypotension? The answer is D, orthostatic hypotension. Now, when we talk about trazodone in the realm of sleep and AIDS, it is like having a reliable friend who helps you out to wind down after a long day. The correct answer here is D, orthostatic hypertension. So picture this, trazodone, it might be an excellent sleep companion, but in the Asian population, it occasionally throws a curveball at their blood pressure when transitioning from a seating to a standing, leading to a bit of dizziness. Now let's t glance at the other options. Weight gain is an typically a star player in trazodone saga. It might bring on drowsiness, but not extra pounds. Extrapyramidal symptoms and hypertension are more likely backstage guests. They aren't the usual concerns that steal the spotlight when trazodone takes the center stage. So when prescribing trazodone for the C for our seasoned individuals seeking a good night rest, we must keep an eye on the potential drop in blood pressure when they decide to stand up. It's about ensuring the journey into sleep is smooth and doesn't leave them feeling a bit lightheaded. Sweet dreams without unexpected detours. That is the goal. Question 13. A contraindication for prescribing a sedative hypnotic is having what listed in the patient's medical history. A. Neurological disease. B. Liver failure. C. Endocrine disorders. Or D. Heart disease. The answer is B, liver failure. So benzodiazepines go through a lot of processing in the liver. It's If someone has liver disease, the breakdown of most benzos slow down, cause them to pile up and up in the chance of side effects. But hey, if you've got neurological issues, endocrine stuff, or heart problems, it's not a red flag for using benzos. Question 14. A patient with insomnia and a history of depression is prescribed a sedating, sedating antidepressant for both conditions. Which class of antidepressant is likely to be chosen for the dual treatment approach? Is it A, SSRIs, B, SNRIs, C, TCAs, or D, MEOIs? The answer is C. So now the star of this combo performance is C, TCAs, tricyclic antidepressants like amitriptyline. So think of them as a versatile actor in the antidepressant world. Not only do they tackle depression, but their sedative effect makes them have a double threat, which also includes including and helping insomnia. On the other stages, uh, we have SSRIs and SRNIs. You know, these are like specialized performers, especially when treating depression, but not as renowned for lulling you into a restful slumber. And then there's the mysterious MAOIs, which is option D. Powerful, 
but often reserved for specific situations due to their potential interactions. They might not be the first choice when we're orchestrating a duet treating both depression and insomnia. So when we're scripted a treatment plan that tackles both insomnia and depression, TCAs take lead, provide a soothing symphony of relief for our patient. Sweet dreams and lifted spirits, that's the goal. All right, thanks for staying with us. Hey, go ahead and click this next video. YouTube thinks this will be very helpful for you. Thank you. Good luck on your test.